Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to talk about the work of photographer Mustafa Hakalaki, I believe. He is a street photographer from Montreal, Canada. Very quickly, uh, I haven't posted much this week and I just wanted to address that. The reason why is because, like I said in the previous video, I am trying to do more writing to develop my thoughts more around these artist studies. And I really enjoyed making the last one. I enjoyed how it came out, how it felt in the end. And because of that, I uh, have to do more writing <laughs> so that I will develop this one to the same degree as the previous one. This takes time, and I'm still trying to figure out that schedule, not to mention I've been up to my eyeballs in work that makes me money, which is a good thing to be up to your eyeballs in. Uh, so just bear with me. Okay. If we look at his profile, which I will link to below, we find a list of photos. Real, authentic photos. Like the leather wallets of a craftsman. Like the latte art of an experienced barista. Like the crops of an old wise farmer. Like a dinner from grandma. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these photos weren't made in Microsoft Paint by some guy from Nigeria trying to pass himself off as a photographer. I know we all hate those emails. This is a real person with a real camera. And so many people are fake, you know? And I don't want no part of that drama. So I would describe his work as urban exploration with distant shadowy people. We see a plethora of scenes with rather moody lighting. Many of his scenes were found at night with street lights illuminating the cold snowy darkness. He seems to utilize the quieter parts of town where there are breaks between light and darkness. But many of his scenes were found in the day as well, involving overcast skies and a feeling of cold that differs little from the night scenes. In his after dark shots, the orange street lights range from providing some beautiful contrast to the often blue coldness to becoming a character in the scene themselves. Like defined points of luminance, or circular orbs of protons, or large glass containers of inert gas generated by an electrified filament. They are what they are. They aren't a loaf of bread, or a tree in the Amazon, or a football, or a sock. They are light bulbs. And that is something, isn't it? His photos feel voyeuristic, with the subject often seen at a distance. You get the sense that perhaps he sets up his shot and waits for the planets to align. He catches his subjects in a plethora of walking positions. These positions always feel poetic, like they are meant to be. It reminds us that beauty is found around us always, that life is full of poetry for us to behold with willing eyes. Willing eyes can be found at your local magic and alchemy shop, by the way. I admire his ability to work with an abundance of body positions and make them sing. In one photo, we have a woman holding a baby in the sunset with the baby pointing outward from her as she rests her chin on the back of the little one's head. In another, we see one of the more dynamic walking shots you will find with some folks in mid-stride on a sky bridge heading into a building that is shooting towards us while the bridge is parallel to us, creating a sort of L-shape with a blue sky behind them. In another, we have a man standing with his hands behind his back in a rather fine art-esque stance, looking at a fine art-esque piece of fine art in some sort of gallery. Cue George Lucas saying, Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. To a very well-executed shot of a shadowy person standing with an umbrella on some planks at the edge of the water on a foggy day. A ship floating by in the distance, and a tall building just worked in on the right edge of the frame. The person gazes across the water, perhaps wondering about how to achieve a great goal, or how to handle a challenging relational situation. Maybe they are pondering the great, mysterious, existential life nature of life. Or what would happen if he tried to ride the umbrella like a boat. He also has a truly magnificent shot of a couple standing in what appears to be a park with tall, leafless trees surrounded by snow, and a very dark blue moody sky. The blue of the scene is broken up by a bit of orange light in the midst of the many trees. Two prominent yellowish-white streetlights are the brightest points in the photo, with the couple standing just to the right of the leftmost light. 
The shadowy couple seems to be oriented towards one another while lovingly touching their arm parts. It's perhaps a beautiful expression of warmth and love in the midst of a moody scene. The combination of elements creates a deep emotional response and is compositionally organic feeling but thoughtful at the same time. In another one, we have a highly symmetrical scene of kids playing in a giant fountain with huge geysers of water violently exploding into the air with the force of 10,000 household faucets. Smaller jets of water fly on the left and right in a diagonal fashion, and the biggest jet in the center launches straight up with a shadowy kid in the foreground, our main subject wading through the water. In the background, we have many more shadowy kids playing in the water with great distance and separation from our protagonist. In the far background, we have two large and rather symmetrical buildings with old and daunting architecture, with a cloudy sky in the farthest of backgrounds. The imposing rectangular quality of the buildings are in sharp contrast to the playful young humans. I love how he uses the sunlit water jets to provide points of brightness in an overall dark scene. It creates a stark and engaging style. A very clever photo indeed. One of the great challenges of street photography is to take a cluttered world and organize it into cohesion with a defined hierarchy. There are quite a few ways to do this in photography, and those ways are mirrored across the visual arts. Physical separation is, of course, one technique. Color contrast is another. In photography and filmmaking, where your lens is focused and how shallow your depth of field is, is another technique. And with filmmaking, you have the added dimension with the ability to pull focus as well as the ability to move the camera around, which lets you know what is important in the scene, even if you don't know why. One technique that all visual arts share, however, is the separation between dark and light. An art piece made up of only a black word on a white page leaves you with a clear understanding of what is important. Invert it and you have the same effect. In Mustafa's work, we see this technique used in much more complex but fundamentally contrasting ways, with the shadows tending to be the overwhelming force, while the bright points tell you what is important. Similarly, we see the use of cool light being an overwhelming force with warm light giving us direction, although sometimes this is reversed. And the reversal tends to work best when the warm light is much less prominent than the cool light, since we are much more visually sensitive to warm tones than cool tones. In the photos of his where this balance is upset, we feel a sort of dissonance with things feeling slightly unsettling. Not to say that this is a bad thing, but it is a tool to be used. The strength in his photos is his mind for composition, his ability to organize a frame into natural and exciting cohesion. I recently made a video about photographer Christophe Jacquereau. I will link to it. I mentioned how his photos feel voyeuristic and lonely in nature, that many of his shots involve a single person in the distance wandering a dark snowy street. Mustafa's work is incredibly similar in that quality. You get the feeling that you're either experiencing a quiet, empty, cold night alone, or that you are watching somebody else who is. When you engage with another human in this way, you are able to observe them in raw form. They are alone with their mind, moving through life. This reminds us that we are all the same in so many ways, that we are all navigating life and facing our many personal challenges. Photos like this connect us by expressing the beauty in the mundane. Now, the interesting dynamic of how we experience these things is that they can be experienced consciously if we try, but without making a choice, we are experiencing them with various intensities subconsciously. They are like undercurrents, noise mixed in. This creates the feeling that there is an ocean to be explored in the photo that we are looking at. This is a powerful force that can influence emotions and help people see daily life from different angles, like fading between different parts of the light spectrum so that now you can see more than nearly the usual visual spectrum. Now you can see radio waves, microwaves, infrared. This is how art affects us. Oh, the profoundness. 
Another thing that I find intriguing about his work is the variety of situations that he shoots in. There are commonalities to his locations, but also differentiation. In one photo, we have a night shot in the middle of town of a car driving towards us on a semi-snowplowed street. In another, we have a shot from behind of a woman in an art gallery staring at a single piece of art, much like the previous one. In another, we have a shot from within a car, on a beach with a woman gazing out into the water. And we have the car's rear view mirror obtrusively in the foreground with a boat being reflected. In another, we see a silhouetted woman riding on a plane. Not like riding onto the plane, but riding from within the plane. In another, we have an old van alone in a parking garage with a single tube light lighting the back of it. And in another, we have a dusk shot of a bay with many shadowy people gathered in the foreground on the waterfront, with the background being a beautiful collection of mountains with a pastel pink sky and a collection of fluffy dark blue clouds hanging over the mountains and the water. I love this one. You get this feeling that he wanders with his camera and that his curiosity is the force that lifts it to his eye. Well, I think I shed a tear on that one. Overall, we see a photographer who is very aware of composition, tone, and the beauty in motion around him. He's also very much in his own skin with a style that is a rather pure expression of creativity that doesn't attempt to force you to accept it. It is what it is. And what it is, is a lovely it, indeed. And that is what it be. His work has a tonal consistency to it, even though his scenes can be quite visually different. It's also an example of how street photography, in a non-urban environment, is perfectly possible. His scenes don't come off as particularly bustling, he utilizes plenty of small town elements in his scenes that would be found in plenty of small American towns, for example. This should be very inspiring to those of you who, like myself, are from a town known for horse races. He cleverly adds intrigue to his photos by leaning into a tone that you can taste. All the elements in the photo seem to point toward a story of the human experience. And he does that prolifically. Okay, that is it for this one. I would love to hear your thoughts about his work. I will link below to said work. If you have people in your mind that you would like for me to talk about in this artist series, I would love to check them out and consider them for a future video. That's it. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.